Passing through devices in XCPNG used to be a command line only option. My video on how to do it from the command line is still relevant and still works, but for those of you that were wanting to do it through the web interface, well, that feature is available now. In version 8.3 on up, you can simply click a button and that device will be passed through. I'm gonna show you how to set that up and how to then attach it to a virtual machine. So let's get started. Now I'm running the latest version of Zen Orchestra available in February of 2025. And yes, this is the self-compiled version, which is why it says no support down here. This is the same version you can use in your home lab. So there's nothing here I'm showing you that requires any type of licenses or subscriptions. This is the fully open source version of Zen Orchestra and XEPNG. We're gonna go home and we're gonna go over to our hosts and we're gonna play with my lab server here, XCPNG Lab. We're gonna go over to the advanced tab and we'll scroll down and it shows all the devices. Now it still shows the USB devices as I did in my other video. So if you wanna pass through a USB device, that still works here, but just below it is where the PCIe devices are. And these PCIe devices, there's two pages of them and you can simply pass through any one of them by clicking it. So if I wanted to pass through this audio controller, for example, I would click it. The operation will reboot the host in order to change. You hit OK and reboots and it works. Please note when you're passing multiple things through, you can't pass them all through and then tell it to reboot. Maybe that'll be a future option. It wants to reboot immediately after passing each one through. There's not another option, but I've only got two devices to pass through this GP 104, which is the 10 70 card I have in here, and then the high definition audio controller, also called GP104, as you need to pass both of them through to work. Once they're passed through, we're gonna go over here to any of our VMs that we wanna attach that's on that particular host. Then go to advance, scroll down. USBs are right here, just like they were, and notice under it is attached to PCI devices. Now these are already attached to another VM, but it will let you attach these to multiple VMs. It just won't let you start all of these VMs at the same time. It will give this class unknown until it started. So let's go ahead and look at one of the other ones that I wanted to test. We'll start this VM, we'll go to advanced because it's also attached here. And once it's attached, it gives it a name because now it's attached and running. To show the video card pass through, I'm just gonna run NV top in this Debian system and you can see the NVIDIA pass through. Now, the pass-through doesn't just work for Linux, of course, it works for any VM, so I've now also passed it through to this Windows system. Of course, I had to stop the Debian one before starting this. If you start them both at the same time, you just get an error that you're trying to attach a device that's not available to be shared between both. It'll just error out and not start the VM. But now I have this NVIDIA GeForce here attached to the Windows machine. Now, another common question people ask is if I attach a graphics card to my Windows machine in a virtualized environment, will it output on that graphics card? As in, will it connect to a regular monitor? And what I did for this test was set up my Jet KVM and plugged it into the output. And as you can see, it's carried right over. So this is the Jet KVM view. This is the view on here, and it does treat it essentially as a second monitor. But of course, I'm only watching this one through the Jet KVM, and this display is the one attached to the actual host in the hypervisor. But yes, this is a functioning way to set this up if you have a use case for this. Now, while this works for passing through PCI devices, what about virtual GPU or NVIDIA grid or other related type of systems? Well, that's a little bit trickier and it has to do with licensing. It will work in XCPNG, but XCPNG, because of license reasons, doesn't ship proprietary drivers. But I will leave you a link to a forum post in their forums where they discuss this and how to put those drivers in. So if you're fine adding on drivers to the system to have support for proprietary things, yes, that works. The argument between shipping proprietary and still calling something open source, I'll leave the comment section down below to debate about that, of whether or not they should just include them to make your life easier, or you should have to do that, but then can you call it open source if they ship it? That is the fun of licensing and, well, what a scope of this particular video. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com for a more in-depth discussion about this. Head over to the XCPNG forums, great place to learn about all these things, including that discussion on the drivers. Head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect me on the social and out of the ones you'll find me on there. All right, and thanks. Lawrence Systems thanks our sponsors for their support.